people are struggling with uh, those issues of uh, understanding the will of Hashem from us on that uh, topic of being a special nation, a unique nation, the nation of Israel, but we're finding ourselves in the exile between many other nations, between many other people, and we see that some of them have a very big love and respect for us and don't have no problem with us and even more so a lot of appreciation and honor and like we said respect and other people that are coming from the nations and they're finding themselves with hatred and anger and, and, and frustration from us as a Jewish <clears throat> as a Jewish nation, Israeli nation. And many people are asking themselves, why? What is the real purpose of our nation? Who are we? What really are we supposed to be? And now why people are hating us for that and why people, they love us for that. So what's, what's really going on? So I think that we can learn on the wide world from the individuals. Every person can learn a lesson about the world from his own life experience. Many of us having relationship and interactions with many people that are not Jewish and in many of those meetings, relationships, we feel fine with those people, nothing bad happens with us, with them, everything is cool and nice and they're respecting us based on who that we really are and everything looks good. But also as individuals, once in a while we feel rejected, we feel like someone got some tension, some pressure on us and we haven't done anything to him. So like, what do you want from me? I never hurt you in a way, we never met. It's like. Hi, bye, what do you want from me? So, I feel about myself that also with people that are close to me and I'm familiar with, also I can find myself in the same situation. Also with my beloved ones, with the people that are closest ones to me, I can have amazing days or amazing hours with them, that everything will flow and will be great. And suddenly something happens that wakes up judgments and angers and, 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 and that's it, it's a war. Now you need to, to see how to cease fire, how to, how to, to please, how to, how to solve it, how to explain or how to ask for like what happened. So the question is how we can recognize what that is in our power to do to fix means how can we really take the responsibility on our actions in a way that will be productive, that will be useful, that we will fix what that need to be fixed and to expand and to keep on building what that makes success and light and love and, and life from our actions, good things that we do. So. There was a very big righteous man, his name was Rabbi Nachman of Weslev. And Rabbi Nachman of Weslev said something very, very unique, something very, very important and special. Rabbi Nachman of Weslev said that when a person is having a conversation with the Creator on a daily basis, so by that conversation he can find the path to walk in, that that path will be the right path for him that will fit to the roots of his own soul. Every individual got a different soul, a unique soul, with different qualities and wisdom and power and talents and different gifts. And people are not always aware to their power, not always aware to who that they are. And because of that, can 
move away from their original path, from the path that really fits to them. So, when a person is keeping that advice, it's a basic, very normal advice to talk to the Creator. It's not something that is like far from, from us or something like we never heard about it before. It's written on Adam Rishon, the first man, that he was talking to Hashem. Chavai Menu, Eve, she had a conversation with Hashem. Noach, he had conversation with Hashem. Chanoch, that he was a man of God. First generations were talking. They were all talking to Hashem. Abraham Avinu, our ancestor, first of all, every day, every morning, he would go to a certain place and he was praying over there. Yitzchak, Sarah, Rivka, Rachel, Leah, Yaakov, everyone were talking to Hashem. And based on that custom, based on that minhag, Chachamim, our rabbis, the leaders of the earlier generations, established for us the mitzvah, the obligation to pray. But the Torah, the Bible itself, already tells us that we need to talk to Hashem. And the obligation to go and to talk to Hashem is something that is from the foundations of Judaism and of all kinds of faith. Because Judaism is not a religion. Judaism is the first way of believing in one Creator. That's the first belief that been revealed in the world of believers. We were not Jewish in those days. It was Abraham that he got something, he realized something, he held certain wisdom, and he had students, and the ones that followed him, mainly Tzchak his son, and after it mainly Yaakov his son, continued with that custom of believing in one Creator, and they inherited, they passed it to the next generations. So Yaakov Avinu was able to give it to all of his children, to the 12 tribes, 12 holy tribes, and all of them went with that faith. That faith walked with them until the kingship of Israel been separated in a huge war that was between the tribes. Small part of the tribes, two, two and a half tribes went with King David, and that's the kingship of Judah. And the other ten lost tribes went to a deeper exile than the one that we went to, and disappeared and blend between the nations. Now, us, as the tribe of Yehuda, that's why we are called Jewish, named after Yehuda, that's Yehudim, named after Yehuda, that he was the head of the tribe of King David, and that's why the tribe, that community that was following King David, went after him, and they were all Jewish. They were all like from the tribe of Judah, of Judah. So they were related, they were close, and they were following him, because he had a very strong faith. Now, he, King David himself, opened our eyes to see and to understand that the faith is not our own um, property. It belongs only to us. We're Jewish and that's it. We're the real believer. That's not the truth. King David is telling us that the faith belongs to everyone. You can read it in Tehillim, in the book of Tehillim, the songs and prayers of King David. He is telling us and mentioning to us that all the world, that all the nations supposed to, in the future to come, to believe in the same God, that He is the real existence, that He is the real being, He is the present, He is the creator of the world, and everyone needs to learn how to serve Him together, means how to commit themselves to Him based on love, to love Him, and to call Him in His name. And our job as a nation that holds that torch is to use that torch to illuminate the world with the light of faith. In the future to come, our obligation, our job will be to be, like the verse is saying, All of you will become to be a nation of Kohanim, servants, a holy nation that will serve 
So now, let's see what were the Kohanim doing in the temple when the temple second and first were built. So the Kohanim, the servants, they had a job. What was their job? To help and assist the rest of our nation when they're coming to the temple to know exactly what to do. And they were just helping us to come into the holy house of the Creator and to serve. They were teaching us how to pray, how to sacrifice the sacrifices that we were obligated. They were guiding us and helping us to keep pure and, and, and our purity and to know exactly how to function in that very high and holy place that was the temple. Now when the third temple will be rebuilt, what that we as a nation will do over there is the same job that the Kohanim were doing in the first and second house. They were serving the rest of the people. Who were the rest of the people? The Jewish nation. To the first and second, mainly, only the Jewish, the Israeli nation were called, were invited. But the third temple that will be built, hopefully soon in our days, Amen. The third temple will bring all the nations, all the people that will desire to serve the one God of truth, will welcome them inside, like the verse is saying, Ki beiti amin, because the house of Hashem will be called the house of prayer to all nations. And our job as a unique nation will be to serve them, to help them, to guide them. So how can it be, let's say, that we are so unique, that we're so amazing, that we are the chosen nation. How can it be that we supposed to be only servants in that amazing, fantastic day? Because our purpose as a nation is to keep God's will. And God's will is that everyone will know Him. So if now He is using that, you for that cause, so you need just to be happy. And that's your real success. That you were completing and fulfilling your job in the mission that God sets for you. Kept and completed the purpose that God, the creator of the world, set for you. So now, when his goal is to make everyone aware to his presence, to his power, to his existence, it makes us, the one that's been chosen, to be the messengers, to be the ones that will teach and will reveal that light to as many people as we can. And that's the purpose of our life to try to make God's will happen in His world, because it is His world. And we are here to become one with the purpose of our creation. So now, the nations, even though that part of them are not aware to the purpose of their life, to where this world is leading them to, like us, all of us also can find ourselves busy and occupied and confused with lust, with desires, with fears, with anxieties, with stress, with, with amazing will to go to a vacation in Miami in the winter. Okay, great, whatever. But still, we're not focused in the purpose of our life. So, it doesn't defect the fact, it doesn't change the fact that Hashem still got a purpose for us, even if we're not aware to it. And He will slowly, slowly guide us, open our eyes, wake us up to find His real will, to find the purpose of our life. And the same He is doing with the nation, with the nations, that He is waking them up one after the other, slowly, slowly, to understand the purpose of, our li of their lives. Now, we as those messengers, have a certain obligation, responsibility, to reveal the light to the nations. Vitem or lagoim. You will be the light to the nations. And the nations, in the back of their head, they know it. And even if they're not aware to it, even if it's hidden from them, still in their hearts, based on how that they've been created, they feel the desire to be one with the Creator. They also have that good desire inside of them in a way 
to achieve the purpose of their life. All the creations wants to achieve that. It's a simple thing that installed inside every particle of the creation to become one in the end of that process with the will of the Creator, to become one with Him. So now, when we are keeping our job in the right way, when we're friendly, when we're nice, when we're happy, when we're positive, when we are sharing, when we are doing our job right, so then, like we said on the family members of us, on our beloved ones, everyone will be happy with you. If you care, and you're smiling, and you're positive, and you're thinking about us, we will be very happy when you came back home. But if you're selfish, and you're self-centered, and you couldn't care about us, so it's not so much fun to see you coming back to the house with your demandings and your whip. So also, in a wider circle, when we as a nation, or ourselves as individuals, are stubborn, and selfish, and self-centered, so the nations that are supposed to receive something from us, they're not satisfied. Something is making them nervous. Something makes them feel bad. Something makes them feel wrong. And then, on what they're going to blame us? Always, they're blaming us only on one thing. That what are we doing? Taking all of the money. That is the main thing that the nations have on Israelis, on Jews. They're taking the money. All of the time. What does the money represent? What's the problem? We're rich, we're successful, let's say so, okay? Even though that most of us are broke. But, you know, <laughs> we'll go with that legend. Who cares? Like, okay, now we're rich and they poor. Okay, what's the problem? We're successful. No. We have a purpose. And what's the purpose? The purpose is to share. The purpose is to give is that we're going to help them to build their economics, that we're going to help them to succeed, like that we will accept, expect from every wealthy person to be generous and not to give us from his money, to share from his life experience and to give one hour a day, one hour a week, one day a month, something to the community and to help us all to build ourselves with him. Okay, you are a genius, you're an amazing doctor, but you cannot accept only private clients that will write you a check on $10,000 each. No, you need to at least once a month, once a year, a week, some one day, like give, contribute from yourself, like that we're obligated to give the 10%, the MISA, or give charity. Those are obligations that everyone from his talents is supposed to give from His power, from the gifts that God gave Him, we are obligated to give. So the nations, they, it's hard for them to understand exactly what their lack of, and money represents the thing that they lack of. You hold the money. We are poor because of you. The truth is, and that's what the Talmud is saying, the Gemara is saying, that the poverty is poverty from wisdom. And aniut el aminadat. The poverty is really in understanding the, the knowledge, the truth. So we, if we really want to take the responsibility on that, and we really want to fix everything from the roots, the thing that we need to share is our wisdom from our talents. Now, it doesn't mean that you need to go and force yourself on people. Listen, you need to do this, you need to do that. No, you cannot force spirituality. You just need to be available for people that need you. And then everyone as an individual need to have his eyes open to see what's going on. What is the hand of the supervision, the divine supervision is making in front of your eyes and demanding and asking from you to give. One person will see that people are asking him for directions. Another person is a doctor or got a certain position that he will see that people need his help. So, okay, you need to smile a little bit more. You need to be a little bit nicer. You need to allow yourself to give some more discounts or whatever. Everyone needs to find what really Hashem wants him to do and to do that. And when you do that, not only that you're going to satisfy the physical circles, the individual people that you're going to come in touch with, you're going to meet. Also spiritually, because you also have a spiritual soul. You're going to cancel judgments from the world. 
You're going to bring kindness and generosity and understanding and peace and love and harmony between people in spiritual and emotional aspects. You will create peace in other pieces of lands, in other places, in other countries, into places that you are not aware even to the fact that you can influence in those places. And how it can be. Because Hashem, when He created the first man, so He took him, He took the earth, and He built, like from clay, the figure of the first man. And it's written that He took, that Hashem, the Creator Himself, He took earth from all the world, from four wings of, of the world. So actually, inside of us, even spiritually, we contain the materia that is the foundation of the physical world. And spiritually, because physically is only showing to us an aspect of what that really goes on in the spiritual dimension, in the spiritual world of truth. And spiritually, our soul are much more endless and eternal that are coming from the sea of souls, from eternity. So for sure that over there we are blended and mixed with the wide world, with all the rest of the souls, in a way. So, because that you, in your roots, touch and part of all the rest of the souls, all the rest of particles of creation, you also have an effect on all of them. So when you fix certain things in your house, you're also fixing those things outside of your house. Because you are wired to the rest of the world, to the rest of the universe, to the rest of the creation. You are connected to the Creator Himself in your root, in the root of your own soul. So now, every person has got a certain size, certain measure, certain ability, certain power, and not more than that, certain amount of money, certain amount of time, certain talent that he got, and nothing else except of what that really installed inside of him, he doesn't have. So, we cannot think that the Creator expects from us to do something that is bigger than our abilities, that is more than what that we can do. So let's say you are an amazing scholar, you can sit and learn. Another person is an amazing poet, someone else is a dancer, someone else, he's got amazing talent to be a parent. He knows, she knows how to raise her children in a fantastic way. Everyone got something, especially America got talents, right? Everyone knows that. So, in that place now, you know that you have something inside of you to work on that, to share that. To reveal that to the world, to expand that light that God treasured inside of you to the wide world, that's your obligation, that's your mission in life. And when, let's say you're a musician, you're gonna, as a musician, do your job, you're gonna open the spiritual eyes and the hearts and the souls of all of the people that have a spiritual connection to music, in a way. You're not going to change the world from one side to the other, but you will affect in your way, with your power, into your section, to the section that you are connected to. And even as an accountant, even as a lawyer, even as a clerk in a bank, even as a, a taxi driver, you have a very strong, powerful effect on thousands and thousands of souls that are connected to you in many, many ways. How it can be that we are finding ourselves meeting people from different nations, from different cultures, and suddenly we're so related to them. There are so much things in common. And you look at that person and say, hey, what's the connection in the world? How me and him are talking about something that we both reveal that we have the same interest, that we both have the same uh, way of thinking about those things. And our education was 100% different. Our culture is different, complete. Everything is different between us. But still, in that point, we are one. Because God gave you that opportunity to realize what it we're talking about. That in the roots, the souls are connected. And we can affect each other. But only when we are open. Only when we are smiling. And... Also, 
there are certain prohibitions, there are certain things that we're not allowed to share. Let's say that you have a house, and you have a wife, and you have children. You're not allowed to host every homeless in your house. You have to ask permission from your wife. And if it's not good for the children, you're not allowed to do it. Even if you're the landlord, even if you bought that house, even if you are I don't know what, still, as a father, as a parent, as a husband, as a man, you have a certain responsibility to take care of the people that depends on you, and not everything that you want to do is easy for them to accept, or even an option for them to deal with. There are certain things that you cannot do to your beloved ones. So there are certain teachings, there are certain things that even as a person that wants to share, that wants to give, you're not allowed to give over. You cannot give a pair of tefillin to a person that is not commanded to put tefillin. You're not allowed to go and start spreading tefillin in the world. Hey everyone, buy tefillin, buy tefillin. No, tefillin is an obligation to the Jewish nation. So now you cannot go and start giving everyone tefillin. It, it's not the right way. You're, just, you're giving too much in a place that is not appropriate for that. It's not fit for that. It's not going to be useful for them. You need to provide to every person what it really he needs to receive from you. And this is, it's okay, so now like it sounds hard. How am I going to know exactly what people need? But it's the easiest thing of them all. It's not hard and not complex at all. We need to count on the main supervisor, on the Creator Himself, that if He gave us, every one of us, a certain ability, a certain talent, you need to work on that. You need to use that. You need to do as much as you can with the powers that Hashem gave you. So you don't need now to try to go and to do things that will be exaggerated. Okay, you know what? That class was so inspiring. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to open a store. And in that store, I'm going to sell CDs and books. No, relax. If you have a store, so you can open a section in that store to sell also books to the nations. Great, wonderful. Expand your activities. Go to be a little bit more sensitive, caring in things that you're already doing. You don't need to go out of your body to be someone else. You don't need to change your path and to become someone else. God is not expecting them from us. What that He wants us to do is that we will be our true selves. That we will reach the roots of our own soul. And from that point, we will express the light that He gave us. And He, don't worry, He with His loving kindness, will supervise on it to share with every person to receive exactly what that he needs. If now you went to the grocery store and you want to buy cucumbers, apples, peaches, wonderful! There are a hundred peaches in that pile. Trust me, you will take only the ones that Hashem wants you to take. You can think and move and take it. Hashem already knows exactly what you're going to do. You don't really need to think so much. If you feel that you need to feel, if you feel that you need to sense which are the right ones for you, so maybe Hashem gave you that thought that you will move a little bit the other fruits and pick one from the bottom of that pile. Maybe Hashem got reasons. Maybe Hashem wants another customer, another friend of us that will come after you to take another fruit that now is sitting in the bottom of that pile and he doesn't have that sensitivity to look. He was just going to take ones from the top of the pile. And he knows that, Hashem, he knows that, that that person will not going to seek. But Hashem really cares about him. And he wants him to take the right sparks to his house. The fruits that really fit for his family. So Hashem Bach makes you dig in that pile and make a big, big, big colorful mess over there in the grocery store. And everyone will look at you and going to say, oh, that's an annoying customer again, making troubles. But Hashem got the plan. And in the end, you're going to make all of that mess, but actually you're just preparing it for your friend that is coming right after you to pick the right fruits from him, for himself. So we need to count on the supervision of the Creator that is super precise, 100% precise, and just to be simple as we can nice as we can, kind as we can, and to reveal only 
what that really comes good for us from our inside, what that really feels right. If you feel like singing, you need to sing. If you feel good learning, you need to learn. One day you will find yourself teaching and letting other people hear your music. One day someone will take a CD that you burned, that you printed, and you will hand it to him, and his life will be changed because of you. And it can be a song that you sang 10 years ago, and you yourself forget about that song. But for him, it will change his life today, or maybe in one year and a half from now. We need to count on the Creator on that. To bring the Creator into our life, it's to believe that there is a divine supervisor, someone that cares about us and makes everything come back to track, comes back to order. That's the purpose of our life. To try as much as we can to nullify ourselves to the divine will, to the will of heaven, to the purpose of life, to become who that we've been created to be. Hashem made you with certain talents, with certain abilities, except of uncovering them, finding them, realize exactly who you are, what your talents are, what is your wisdom, what is your power. One person is able to write amazing books, novels, another person cannot write such long books, but he can write songs, he can write children's books. You need to do that. And not to criticize yourself and judge yourself. No, who's going to read my books? For sure, if you're going to go with that thought, no one will read your books. You must believe in yourself that if you have that urge, that desire to do something with your talent, you must do that. A friend of mine came to me in, in, in Shabbat and he told me that he met a certain rabbi, a certain person that is an author, that is writing books. And he came to him, my friend, and told him, I have an amazing idea for a book. He told him, okay, tell me. And he told him all of his long explanation about that big seller, amazing, fantastic book. Great. That rabbi looked at him and told him, I'm telling you from my heart, it is an amazing idea. I think you should write that book. Don't sell me your book. Write your own book. Don't try to convince me to write your book. You should write your book. The verse is saying, Sefer Katav Ishrevi. The man that is fighting with me, he wrote my book. Means that the judgments and the difficulties of my life built my own life experience, experience that gives me the wisdom. En chacham kebal nisayon. You buy the wisdom of your life from your own life experience. Your life brought you to a place that you can create from that place. A woman that she's an amazing artist. She told me, for a few years, I'm not doing no art. I asked her why. She said, since my divorce, my creativity is blocked. I cannot paint anymore. I cannot do no more art. I told her, listen, are you happy that you divorced or not? She said, very happy. I told her, all right. Now it's the time to come back to yourself. Now you will see that the art that you will do right now will be much nicer than the one that you had before. It was not enough for her. Her self-esteem self was still shaky, still not confident enough to start. And she said, but I tried so many times. I was sitting in front of my canvas and everything was blocked. I didn't know what to do. I told her, you know what you need to do? You need to sit for two hours and to paint and to illustrate and to do your art. And in the end, after two hours, you don't like it, throw it away. But in one condition, that tomorrow you're going to sit for another couple of hours to do the same. And I promise to you that the light of your soul will shine on that canvas in a way that you never experienced before. Because the evil inclination, the darkness of this world, is trying always to shut down the light of our soul. Because our souls are so beautiful and so great. And they will reveal the light of God in the end. In the end of that process, that everyone will be so creative and so himself and so happy and proud of himself, the light of Hashem will be revealed in the world. Because what is treasured inside of us, what did God see that inside of us, what did God planted, inherit to us, everyone received the beam of light that is channeling us to Him. And when we will open our mouths, will open our hearts, will open ourselves, we will reveal His unique light, His light of heaven. 
So the Yetzer Hara, an evil inclination that is willing to hide the existence of the Creator in the world, is trying to depress everyone and to fight with everyone to block and to deny his own power, his own creativity, his own treasures, who that he really is. And that's why the Yetzer Hara, the evil inclination, put inside the minds of all of the people one crazy, silly, the most sickest idea in the world, the worst that he could find, the best for him, worst for us. He's trying to convince us that we are not good and that we need to be like someone else. The only one thing that is impossible for a human being to be in this world is someone else. That's the only thing that you cannot achieve in this world is to be someone else. There is only one thing that you can be, and it's yourself. One thing you cannot be, it's someone else. One thing that you can be is your true self. Now the Yetzirah is always telling you how bad you are, how worthless you are, how weak you are, how ugly you are, how weak you are, how stupid you are, that you will lose hope on finding your true self. And you're going to give up on revealing the light of the Creator in His world. That's the Yetzirah's job. That's his mission, to block the light. So our main purpose is supposed to be to reveal the truth of who that we really are. So if you're a poet, you must be a poet. If you're an athlete, you must go and run and play and do whatever you need to compete, to whatever you need. If that's who that Hashem made you, that's what you need to do. And if you have a desire to learn Torah, Fantastic! That's what you need to do. And if you're a simple person and you just want to learn a little bit and you want to sit and dine with your family and you want to go camping once a month and you want just to have a normal, decent life, work in your garden, can you imagine the greatness of a simple person that's having a normal family life that is able to communicate with his neighbors, to smile to people, to share, to invite guests to his house once in a while, just to help his neighbors with their parking lot or whatever, to remove the snow when, when it snows from their parking. I don't know what. Just those simple things that you will find yourself capable of, able to do, that it's really in your power, can open the bridge, can open those doors for so many people to come closer to them selves, to their true selves, to become like you, not to copy you, just like that you are your true self, they will try to find their true selves. If you're a singer, it doesn't make me a singer. And if you're singing, I can enjoy hearing your music. It doesn't push me to be a singer. Only if I also have it inside of me and I was afraid, now by hearing you singing, you know what? Maybe I'm going to sing as well. But I can also allow, I allow also just to hear your music in my car while I'm driving. It's also a way of us enjoying from each other without me copying or trying to become like you. You will sing and I will hear. And I will be an amazing accountant and I will work on your papers and don't worry, we're helping each other. Everyone are completing each other in this creation. And that's the secret of unity. And also the nations, they have a part in that. Every organ got a different purpose in life. Your head is not more important than your heart. Your right hand is not more important than your left. Your hand is not important than your leg. You don't know what the organs are doing, actually. Because every physical organ got a spiritual aspect as well. And we don't know. There are so many powers, there are so many wisdom, there are so many gifts that have been installed inside the nations, inside the world, that we must accept it as it is. We must understand that Hashem, the Creator, He is running the world. He is the one that is supervising and He is bringing and He is moving and He is sharing and He is making those amazing channels of communication of today in the modern culture of today, all the social media, to make all the world one. People are calling it a small world. It's not small at all. It's huge. Just that the Creator that is supervising on it is much, much greater. 
He really covers the world and knows how to run the system in a way that everything will flow, that everything will run. And suddenly you can communicate with the person and you can see what happened over here and over there. And we just need to try to do all of those things with a good attitude, with a positive attitude. So if you're a lawyer, you need to be an honest lawyer. <laughs> yeah. It's a mission. It's a big thing. Let's see you. Do that. You need to be an honest person. You need to be a kind person. You need to be a positive person and to express your positivity. And that's the mission of your life. Just to be who that you really are and to share it with people. To let people enjoy from what that you received from heaven. But... Not more than you're able to. Not more than your family able to. Not more than your family, that circles that are surrounding you are able to. For the good and for the bad. Not too much. And also you need to be sensitive to their needs and to supply. If you need to educate your children and everyone is different, you need to give everyone a different education. You have a wife, she needs to receive a different attitude, a different attention from you than your children or your neighbors or your parents. Everyone is different. And you need to flow and to feel everyone corresponding to their needs and to try to be there for every one of them based on the power that you have and to feed them and to supply for them exactly what they need to receive for their purpose of life. So if now you have a child that is very gifted in something, in science, in art, you need to provide a teacher, someone to, to write him to, to courses or whatever that will make him be, to be able to express his talent, his wisdom. And you need to sense that. How are you going to sense something that you never sensed yourself? Can you supply something that you never saw in your life? Someone is telling you, hey, I want you to supply me gymnastics. Can you bring that to me? I needed to bring it gymnastics. Can you do that? No, why? Because you never heard about that thing, so you can never supply that. But if I'm asking a camera, and I'm telling you it's a Canon camera, and I'm going to tell you exactly the, 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 the number of the item, and you say, okay, I can, I can Google it, I can find it, I can search it, I can send it to you. And if you're a cameraman, if you're a photographer, okay, so it's going to be much easier for you. And if you have a store for cameras, so well, that's it, it's a, it's a done deal, no problem. You can give only from what that you know. So, if you don't know yourself, you'll never be able to supply pe people the access to their true selves. Because you don't know yourself. If you're not sensitive to who that you are, to find out who you are, what's the mission of your life, you can never guide other people to find the purpose of their own life. This is why people are forcing other people, no, you must be a lawyer, no, you have to be a doctor, you have to be a Talmud Chacham, you have to learn Torah, you have to do this, you have to do that. Why are they doing this? Because they never found themselves, and they feel empty, and they're trying to cover on their horrible lacking of not finding themselves, trying to satisfy and to answer for their horrible loss of losing their own lives by forcing other people to the same pattern, to the same spot, to the same emptiness that they're spending their lives in. If a person is learning Torah and he's happy to learn Torah, everyone that will see him will want to learn Torah with him. Why? Because there is a light that is shining from him. The light of Torah. The light of his true self, that he found himself in the Torah, so the Torah is shining from him. If you went to a dentist, and that dentist is really a positive, happy person, doing his job in loyalty and in grace, you will always going to try to go to the same dentist, if you will need one. Why? Because you will feel comfortable to go to him. And I'll tell you why. Because he is a real dentist. Because you really found his position in life. And you need a dentist, so you found him. But if there is a person that he was just too nervous to choose a profession, and he didn't know what to do, and he had a crazy pressure from the sides, and he didn't have money, and he had to find something that will make a lot of money, and now his parents opened a clinic for him, stay away from that clinic. You don't want to go to that dentist. Why? Because he's not a real dentist. 
He's just there for the money. He's there to make you root canals and to uproot your teeth and to fix your jaw and to, to make money on your back. You don't need that. You need your teeth. You need the doctor. You need something to help someone to help you to heal your mouth. You don't need someone to heal your, your bank account, to heal his bank account based on yours. You need a doctor, a dentist. So the light of the Torah that will shine from a real scholar, from a real Talmud Chacham, will be the light of Torah Chaim, of Torah that contains life. But if you will see a person that has been forced to learn Torah, and he himself cannot find the Creator in his learning, cannot find the roots of his own soul, so his Torah will not gonna be desiring for you, will not invite you to the gates of Torah, to sit with him in a Beit Midrash and learn. And even if he will be a rabbi that is teaching and preaching and telling everyone, you must learn Torah, you must sit in the Beit Midrash, it will reject people from learning Torah because that person is not a real Talmud Chacham. He is not a real qualified rabbi, not a real messenger of the Creator that been appointed by God to water the herds, to give water to the thirsty ones, to teach and to guide and to support and to heal and to share from the godly message of the Creator Himself. So He won't be able to do that. Every position is a position that been aimed from heaven. And we need to find our true selves and to be loyal to our inner voice and to follow it. In the days of King David, not everyone were sitting and learning Torah. They were learning more Torah maybe than we're learning today, but... There were also people that were selling fruits and vegetables, also ritual slaughterers, also people that are fixing the roads and people that were throwing the garbage to the dumpsters, to wherever. There were people that were working, building houses, planting, seeding, harvesting, everything was. You cannot expect from a person that he's a farmer to sit all day long in the Beit Midrash. You're going to understand the farmer that is spending many, many hours of his life every day, years of his life, that he will spend them in the farm, right? That's his job. It's okay. And Hashem will be happy from that as well. There is an amazing story that has been told by Rabbi Levi Yitzhak Miberditrov. Rabbi Levi Yitzhak Miberditrov was a very righteous man. 200 years ago, he lived in... in, uh, in uh, Ukraine, and Rabbi Levi Tzachmi Berditrov, that story came to him. There was a person that owned a, a, like, like a restaurant and a hotel, a small motel in, in, in one of the villages, and he was running a kosher restaurant over there. It was a kosher place, and many Jewish people that were business people, merchants, they were going and they would spend the night over there eating, it was in a big intersection in one of the villages and, and on the highways and the, in important ways. And he was hosting people with kashrut, with honor, with respect. It was all nice and clean and decent. But that person spent so many years running that hotel and that restaurant that he was frustrated. He felt bad. And when he reached 70 years old, he decided to retire. And he called his son, his son was 20, 25 years old, and he told him, listen, my son, I, all of my life, all of my days, I was spending here in this restaurant. I built it from zero, from nothing. And today it's very successful, it's very great. For you, the work will not going to be hard. You know exactly how things are working here. And you know, if you need me, I'm always here. I want to go and sit in the Beit Midrash and learn a little bit of Torah. And I want to... To, to, to pay for all of those years that I was not learning enough. So his son, of course, amazing opportunity. Ten years earlier than I expected it to come, he was so happy. And he took that restaurant, but he was not as righteous and honest as his father. And he started inviting his friends to the restaurant, and they were playing music loud, and slowly, slowly, the, the kashrut, the, the purity of that place, shaked a little bit and it was not as it was before so the 
honest and, and righteous people that were traveling, the kosher people that were traveling, they couldn't come and host in that hotel anymore. They were not happy, happy from the food, they were not happy from the company, from people. They, and it was hard for them, because once, while they were traveling from one city to the other, they could rest over there in that place, in that village, but now they don't have that place anymore. And that situation came in front of Rav Levi Yitzhak Mibardichov. People came to Rav Levi Yitzhak Mibardichov and told him about their problem, that now they're traveling and they don't have a place to stop because the person that was running that restaurant and hotel, he went to learn Torah. Rav Levi Yitzhak Mibardichov said, um, please call that um, hotel owner to me, please. I want to speak with him. One messenger came to the Beit Midrash, knocked on the door, went inside, saw him saying to him with tears, with joy, happy, told him, Ablevi Yitzchak Miberdichov is calling you. What have I done? What have I done? Start doing tshuva. I don't know. What have I done? Start blaming himself, chasing himself, but nothing to do. Had to go with that messenger to Rab Levi Yitzhak Miberdichov. He came to Rab Levi Yitzhak Miberdichov, get inside with fear, with honor, with respect, with shame. Rabbi Yitzchak stood up, respected him, told him, welcome, I heard so many great things about you. For years, people are just praising you and telling me good things about you. So that person was a little bit relieved, he was happy, he felt good with himself, at least good things he hears from the Rav. And the Rav invited him, please sit down. They said, they're chatting, talking. Rabbi Levi Yitzhak asked him, okay, so what are you doing today? He said, look, all of my life I was doing the best that I could, like you just said. I, I invested all of my life in the restaurant, in the hotel, that people will have a place. But I came to 70 years old and I felt like I missed something very big in my life. I also wanted to learn to run. So I decided now to give the hotel and the restaurant to my son. And me, myself, I'm in the Beit Midrash. And every day I'm praying in a minyan. And every day I'm learning the whole book of Tehillim I'm saying. And I'm learning Mara, and I'm learning Mishnayot, and I'm learning Shulchan, and Shulchan Aruch, and I'm doing this, and I'm so happy. So the Baal Shem Tov was, uh, so the Rabbi Levi Tzadmi was so impressed, and he told him, it's amazing. I appreciate your will. And your will is accepted, and wanted, and welcomed in heaven, and Hashem is very happy. But I want to tell you one small thing. Him, yes, please. He said, through the years, the Creator, he had many, many scholars, many righteous people that put their life into learning Torah and keeping mitzvot. What did Hashem didn't have so many during those generations was honest business people that will run their business with honor and in loyalty and will not cheat and will not steal. People like you were when you were running the restaurant and the hotel are the people that the Creator lack of. So if you want to hear my advice, go back to your old position and run the hotel and the restaurant because you were satisfying and pleasing Hashem much more when you were doing that than today. The question is, what is your will? What is your purpose? to satisfy yourself and to learn and to be happy, or that it's really the purpose of your life and you're doing it for Hashem. The question is, what are you trying to achieve from life? Are you trying to satisfy yourself or that you're trying to connect yourself to your real purpose, to be who that really Hashem sends you to be? If you will find your point in Avodat Hashem, you will find true happiness. You will feel satisfaction. A musician cannot be happy without music in his life. A dancer cannot be happy unless he's dancing every day. An athlete feels that he needs to move his organs. He feels like to run somewhere. A person that is good with numbers will think about numbers even if he's working in something else. Every person got a certain desire to certain things. Those are the things that Hashem Yitbarak planted inside of you. You're not allowed to ignore them. You must reveal them, find them, recognize them inside of yourself, and then to find a way how to benefit the world with your talents. And if you don't have the knowledge, 
And if you don't understand exactly who you are and what your purpose is, for that we receive that amazing gift that calls prayer. Prayer is a way to express yourself, your true self. Like that we said that Rabbi Nachman of Breslev said, that a person that will have a daily conversation with the Creator will find a path that will fit for him corresponding to the roots of his own soul. You will find your true self because your spirit reveals itself when you speak. Now after I spoke for an hour, you heard something, you learned something about me, right? For me, it's harder to learn something about you. Why? Because you're not talking. But if you would talk, I would hear you, I would learn about you. And also I am learning about myself now when I'm talking. Because when I'm talking, I'm revealing my own spirit. There are things that you cannot hear about yourself before you express them. There are things that you're aware of, but there are deeper layers inside of our true being, undercover. Information that is covered from our own eyes, from our emotional eyes, from our physical eyes, from our spiritual eyes, and we cannot recognize them. Only an honest investigation, a deep conversation of searching the truth will uncover our deepest secrets, our real desires, our real purpose of life. You can ask yourself, what really going to satisfy me? What really going to make me happy? What really going to build me? What really going to give me the push, the inspiration to go and to succeed and to do big things in life, to feel happy? To be satisfied from life. For that we need everyone to have a certain time. And also that time. You can find the right amount of time that is fit for you. One can go and do one hour. One feels that he cannot speak. That he's wasting his time one hour every day. And ten minutes is the exact amount of minutes that he can express himself and feel happy with. And that's the right way. And in those prayers, you can also say to Hashem, Hashem, I want to talk to you more. Maybe I have more to give. Please teach me. Please guide me. Please open the doors of my soul that I'll develop awareness, that I'll find my true self. To pray is a very powerful thing. It's an amazing thing, amazing experience. And when you pray to the Creator, you should talk to Him like you talk to your Father to Father of Mercy. You talk to Him like you talk to someone that cares about you. You talk to Him like you talk to your best friend, with honor, with appreciation. And also with your best friend you're allowed to fight. Means that if you have doubts and questions and unsolved things in your life, you can also bring them to the discussion table because you're sitting with your best friend. You're sitting with someone that already expressed himself and said, I love you. I want to help you. Okay, so if you want to help me, so I have those issues. I have those problems. Please help me with A, with B, with C. Help me to heal my soul, heal my spirit, that I won't be scared anymore. Build my self-confidence. Talk about your true self. And those prayers will be prayers that came out of the heart. Prayers of truth. And the Creator is close to everyone that calls Him with truth. Means that those prayers will be the prayers that will be answered. So we must go with that simplicity, with that honesty, <coughs> just to go and open our hearts and our mouths in front of Hashem and to tell Him all of our hearts and to share with Him our needs, our desires, our confusions and our fears and to have that confidence that after that we pray, that we open ourselves to Him, He will reveal His loving kindness, His endless love, love that is not dependent in our actions, a greater love that we can imagine, than we can imagine. Unconditional love to all of His creations, love of mercy, love of kindness, to answer and to supply all of our needs, and counting on that promise of Rabbi Nachman of Wisdom that said that if you will keep that advice to pray, to talk to Hashem, to talk to the Creator, that one that created you, that sent you to that mission, you're going to find a path that fits for you completely.
by the roots of your own soul to find true happiness and satisfaction from life. May it will be the share of all of the believers, all the ones that are searching for truth and love and justice. Amen. Can you some? Thank you very much. This world, in this period of time, we have a mission. What's the mission? The mission is only not to forget the Creator, to remember that it's all Him, never to fall in the trap of all of those coverings, of all of those husks. husks.